Before we start the episode, I just want to say thank you for watching, and if you can, please hit the subscribe button, or even like the video, as a significant amount of time and effort went into making it. The CPU Historical Society is not a large university society, and we don't monetize any of our videos for money, therefore all our videos are made solely for entertainment and educational purposes. So, thanks again for watching. Hi there, my name is Avery, president of the Cape Breton University Historical Society, and you're watching the premiere episode of our new series, History Beyond the Lens. History Beyond the Lens is a series that looks at films from a historical perspective, which means that we dissect movies and find ways to connect them to our own history, either through parallels, behind-the-scenes historical inspiration, or film theories. For today's episode, Star Wars in Nazi Germany, we'll discuss the parallels between the Galactic Empire and the Third Reich, aka the Nazis. While the two main villains of the original Star Wars trilogy, Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader, are both their own unique characters, both of which bear many similarities to two of the most infamous Nazis that existed during the Second World War. Those men are Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler. Palpatine was the one who oversaw everything throughout the Empire, as well as the one who pulled all the strings from the shadows. Palpatine started out as Chancellor of the Republic, only to completely overthrow it and declare himself as Emperor of the Galaxy. He was a type of leader who ruled through fear and always had contingency plans, up his sleeve, in case anything went wrong. Let's shift things over to the real world now. The year is 1933, and Germany is about to undergo a serious change in governing power. Adolf Hitler is appointed Chancellor of Germany. Now, despite being declared Chancellor in 1933, Hitler actually didn't have much power yet, mainly because the Nazi party didn't have enough seats in Parliament. On February 27, 1933, exactly four weeks after Hitler has become Chancellor, the German Parliament building, known as the Reichstag, is mysteriously set ablaze. Essentially caught in the act of burning the building, authorities apprehended a Dutch man named Marinus van der Lubbe. He was supposedly connected to the Communist Party as well. So when a communist basically caught in the act, Hitler spins things and claims that the German parliament is actually under attack by the communists. Therefore, action needs to be taken to prevent something like this from happening again. To make a long story short, after a while, Hitler is actually given complete control over Germany. And from there, things really start to change. This was the beginning of a dictatorship. Not only would Hitler's rise to power change Germany completely, by 1939, it would change the entire world. On September 1st, 1939, Germany would invade Poland, which would start the Second World War. From this point on, the world would never be the same. The age of Hitler had officially begun. Let's now compare Palpatine versus Hitler and see how much they have in common. Both started out as chancellors. Both also staged their rise to power. With Palpatine, it was with the Jedi Purge, and with Hitler, it was with the Reichstag fire, supposedly, that is. Both also would arrest or execute anyone who opposed them. Both also had a complete disregard for life. Hitler being Jewish life, Palpatine being all life. Hitler also aimed to take over the planet by using fear and lies. Palpatine, on the other hand, actually did take over the galaxy by using fear and lies. After comparing all those facts, I think it's safe to say that Emperor Palpatine was completely based on Adolf Hitler. 
Now that we have finished discussing Hitler and the Emperor, let's now move on to everyone's favorite villain, Darth Vader, and see how he compares to Hitler's second-in-command, Heinrich Himmler. You could argue that Darth Vader is one of, if not the best villain in film history. From the moment he first comes on screen in the first Star Wars movie, you know he's the type of guy that would probably kill you without a moment's hesitation. After all, not even a minute after his first appearance, he chokes a man to death. Vader basically ran all the militaristic operations within the Empire, and everyone answered to him. The only person who didn't was the Emperor. Perhaps one of the worst things Vader ever did was overseeing the destruction of the Jedi Order, whom he was previously a part of. This genocide happened early on in Vader's Dark Crusade, and from there, he only became more evil. Sadly, no one was exempt from the Jedi Purge, including children. Let's now shift things back to World War II and examine SS leader Heinrich Himmler and see how his villainous acts inspired Darth Vader. Himmler joined the Nazi party in 1923 and was later promoted to Reich leader of the SS in 1929. More on the SS later in the video. By 1934, Himmler was promoted to be the head of Germany's secret state police, which were known as the Gestapo. The Gestapo were the ones who hunted down those who opposed Hitler's reign and would either arrest or execute them, often without trial. To make matters worse, Himmler was also the one that personally oversaw and set up the infamous concentration camps. Like many of the Nazis, Himmler showed no compassion towards those that were Jewish and didn't even view them as people. It's important to note that because of this extremist notion of anti-Semitic beliefs is what ultimately led to the murder of over 6 million Jewish men, women, and children. While Hitler is often to blame for this mass genocide, Heinrich Himmler is equally to blame, as well as numerous other Nazi officials. Like we previously did with the Emperor and Hitler, let's now compare Vader to Himmler and see how much these two have in common. Both were second in command to a dictator. Both oversaw a mass genocide based on religion. Both hunted down anyone who opposed their leader's rule. And both would not hesitate to exterminate the opposed religion, including children. With all the evidence and comparisons presented, I can confidently say that Darth Vader is completely based off of Heinrich Himmler. When it comes to the troopers and officers, Star Wars doesn't even attempt to be subtle about its parallels to the Nazis. The similarities are so obvious that many fans have jokingly referred to the Empire as Space Nazis. Next to Darth Vader, the stormtroopers are probably the most recognizable thing about the Empire in Star Wars in general. Their stark white armor and intimidating helmets have become ingrained in pop culture. Even more so, their complete inability to hit anything has become a running joke throughout the series. It's actually laughable. Technically speaking, the term stormtrooper actually originated in the First World War from the German army. During World War I, stormtroopers were a type of soldier that specialized in assault and infiltration. The stormtroopers often wouldn't fight in the front lines. Instead, they would target key areas of the battlefield to weaken the enemy lines. Fun fact, believe it or not, the Germans of World War I often would refer the Canadian soldiers as stormtroopers as well. This is actually supposed to be taken as a compliment as the Canadians were surprisingly fierce soldiers on the battlefield, and like the German stormtroopers, they too specialize in assault warfare. The whole purpose of the stormtroopers 
changed in World War II. Their new purpose was to serve as the elite bodyguards of the Fuhrer, a.k.a. Hitler. Like the soldiers of the SS, the Stormtroopers, or SA, were an intimidating force to be reckoned with. The SA had a big role in Hitler's rise to power, as they would often physically assault Hitler's political opponents, similar to the Gestapo. Aside from the name, the Stormtroopers of the Star Wars universe have a lot in common with the Stormtroopers of World War I and II. Like the Stormtroopers of World War I, there does exist a variation of Stormtrooper in Star Wars that specializes in assault and infiltration, that being the Shock Trooper. As I said earlier, the purpose of the Stormtrooper changed in World War II. They were now Hitler's elite bodyguards. In the Star Wars universe, there does exist a type of elite bodyguard known as the Imperial Royal Guards, who protect the Emperor. The difference in Star Wars, the Imperial Royal Guards are outfitted in complete red and seem to be more of a royalty type of thing, more so than the militaristic stormtroopers that were seen in World War II. The SS started out as Hitler's bodyguards while being responsible for state security. However, over time, they became the elite protection squad of all high-ranking members of the Third Reich. I think the best comparison for the SS soldiers as a Star Wars equivalent would be the Death Troopers that were introduced in 2016's Rogue One. These fearsome all-black troopers would often accompany high-ranking members of the Empire and were highly trained for whatever came their way. Finally, to finish off the video, I like to compare the Empire's Imperial officers to the Nazis' SS officers, as this is definitely the biggest connection Star Wars has to the Nazis. This connection isn't even subtle in the slightest. Nazi SS officers were the commanding officers of the SS troops. They had quite a bit of power both over their soldiers and in the Nazi party. The most defining characteristic of an SS officer was their dark colored uniforms. SS officers often wore high boots, belts with large belt buckles, an officer's hat, and stiff dress clothes. From head to toe, the Imperial officers are basically the exact same thing as the SS officers. Their uniforms are almost identical with a couple little tweaks here and there. You would often see the Imperial officers on board the Death Star or commanding the Star Destroyers. We've now reached the end of the video. If you stayed for the whole thing, thanks for watching. By hitting the subscribe button or liking the video helps the Society's channel a lot, especially considering the amount of time and effort that went into creating this video. In regard to sources, I'd like to thank History.com as well as Cole Horton, who is a historian who has written a lot of great World War II articles on StarWars.com. Alright, that wraps up everything for this video. Thanks again for watching, and if you can, hit that subscribe button, or like the video. See you next time.